In this presentation, we are going to have discussion on apparent power and power factor. And we have already obtained the formula of average power. We know average power is equal to half Vm Im cos theta V minus theta I. And we can write the average power equal to V RMS I RMS cos theta V minus theta I. Now I want you to focus on the second formula I have written here. When you focus on it, you will find here we are multiplying voltage and current. And we know when voltage is multiplied to the current, we have the power. So it is clearly visible or you can say that it is apparent that this portion or this term is going to be a power. So it is power and as it is apparent that it is a power, we call it apparent power and we represent it by uppercase S and it is equal to RMS value of the voltage multiplied to the RMS value of the current. So we can say that the average power P is equal to the apparent power S multiplied to cos theta V minus theta I where this is the apparent power and it is measured in volt amperes. And why we measure apparent power in volt amperes? Because we want to distinguish it from the average or real power which is measured in watts. And now we will shift our focus on the second term we are having in this formula. The second term is a factor and this factor cos theta v minus theta i we know as power factor. So we can say that the average power is equal to the apparent power multiplied to the power factor and from here we can say that the power factor is equal to the ratio of average power to the apparent power and it is equal to cos of theta v minus theta i. Now what is this theta v minus theta i? We call theta v minus theta i power factor angle and this power factor angle is equal to the angle of load impedance. Let's say we have a load across which voltage is Vt and it is equal to Vm cos omega t plus theta v and uh, through the load the current is I t and it is equal to I m cos omega t plus theta i. Now we can have the phasor representation of vt and it. vt will have the phasor equal to vm angle theta v and it will have the phasor representation im angle theta i and we know the impedance z is equal to v phasor divided by I phasor. So from here we can say that we have Vm angle theta V divided by Im angle theta I or we can say that we have Vm divided by Im angle will be theta V minus theta I. So the load impedance is having the angle theta V minus theta I which is the power factor angle. And therefore, we can say that the power factor angle is equal to the angle of load impedance when Vt is the voltage across the load and It is the current through the load. And we can also understand power factor as the factor by which the apparent power should be multiplied in order to have the average power. And this power factor, this power factor is always less than or equal to 1 and it is greater than or equal to 0. So it cannot have the value less than 0 and it cannot have the value greater than 1. And when we have the purely resistive load, then in this case we know 
voltage and current will be in the same phase and therefore theta v will be equal to theta i and this implies the power factor angle will be zero so the power factor will be equal to cos zero degree or we can say one and therefore the apparent power will be equal to the average power in case of purely resistive load moving on to the next point we have purely reactive load this time and this means theta v minus theta i the power factor angle will be equal to plus minus 90 degrees and therefore the power factor will be equal to cos plus minus 90 degrees and it will be equal to zero so the average power is equal to zero in this case so this is the case when we have power factor equal to 1 and this is the case when we have power factor equal to 0 and for all the other cases power factor will be in between these two extremes and is said to be leading or lagging leading power factor means leading power factor means we have current leading the voltage and this implies we have the capacitive load and the lagging power factor means the current is lagging the voltage and this implies we have the inductive load